Welcome, I'm Lee Kellogg, and today we are going to do an exploration, sort of an art materials um, exploration of pearlescent watercolors. So we're going to play with like the Tombi starry colors, and Tombi makes a, um, this is Zig Kurataki, and they make a bunch of others also. These are lovely paints. Um, we're going to play with the Fine Tech, and I don't know where I put them, the Fine Tech pearlescent colors. We've got the Etcher. And these guys come in, I love the color of their, their little palettes that they come in. Very cool. Um, pearlescent colors. So we're going to play with four different pearlescent colors and compare them on white paper, toned paper, and black paper. And you'll be able to see which ones work best on what paper because there is one set that I don't like on white paper. So we will go explore and find out which one it is. So let's go play. So to start with, we are going to use the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors. This is the package the tin comes in. You can buy these um, little trays independently. They pop in and out of the tin, so you don't have to buy the tin. They are not inexpensive. I would call this probably the, the most expensive of the sets. We are going to play with Strathmore Tone Grade Mixed Media Paper, Fabriano 1264, which is, it's a cold press watercolor paper, about 140 pounds, 300 grams, and then Stonehenge um, black watercolor paper, again, 300 grams, 140 pounds. It's a, um, this black one's 100% cotton. It's a fun, fun paper to have a pad of around and play with. So we will start with, I think we'll just go in order. We'll go white, gray, and black. And obviously some of these colors are not gonna show up, but I'm going to label this just so I know what colors I've got on this sheet. So when we're done, we can see what's going on. These colors are definitely creamy. I, I put a little water on to pick to get them activated and I'm picking up a lot of paint, a lot of pigment with them. That's their two for one color, they call it. some of these blues especially this one looks purple in the palette but when it's on that white paper it looks gray these blues these are all got a lot of heavy grays in them so there's the fine tech on the white let's go to fine tech on gray And these fine tech colors are showing up nicely on this gray. Mm, so already we're seeing a little bit of these fine techs. I would say these have some interference built into them. If you look at them, on the white, this looks awfully, bl almost black. There's a black, but gray. This teal doesn't have much showing. This is a blue gray. And look at how they're showing up on the um, toned paper. You know, real silver, but the blues are starting to come out. This definitely looks like teal. Little bit of purple starting to show. So again, your um, surface matters. And you can see these fine techs are just standing out brilliantly on the black. Mm. 
And this one that shows up really red on um, the white is got more green showing up there. And look at that blue on this one. Nice. And the teal is going to be off. Oh, brilliant teal. Look at that. Let's see what the purple does. Nice purple. So I would say, and we're not even comparing colors, we're comparing the fine tech on similar surfaces, on different colored surfaces, that this is the purple on white, the purple on toned, and then the purple on the black, and it shows up purple. And look at the teal, the difference in the teal and the difference in the blue. So some of these colors definitely need a dark, their interference. They've got some dark pigments in them that make them show up better on dark colors. So let's move on and label this guy, this black one, to the Creative Expressions, which is one I used to sell in my shop. These are easily available, especially all of this is available online. Trying to do similar sets, similar colors, just so we're somewhat comparing apples and apples and or semi apples. So one thing I would say the fine tech did not have, which they may have as independent colors, was a good green in that set. This sort of blush, peachy color is real interesting. There's creative expressions on the tone. Now let's do it on the black. And remember, when you're using these colors, usually these uh, pearlescent colors have the mica in them along with the pigment. And you do need to wake them up and you may have to stir them a bit. So every time, if you've noticed when I'm picking up the color, I'm sort of swirling the brush around just a little bit to pick up some of the mica and the pigment. So it's interesting to see how some of these colors stand out on this black. It just they, they go to town. All right.
right. Next, we're doing Etcher Studios. Etcher Lab, either one. Um, their little student set. They're quite up front that this is a student grade set, which is fine. There's nothing wrong when you buy something fun like this to use student colors, especially if you're experimenting and not sure what you're going to do or if it fits your budget. Because I think these are about $35 from Etcher. You might be able to get them from Dick Blick. They have an interesting coppery brown, which I like. I've been using that one quite a bit. It's been a lot of fun. So there's the three sets so far on the white paper. You can see there's quite a bit of difference between the fine tech up here and then even when we get down to Etcher, we need to let everybody dry to be on an even playing field. But just as they're wet, you can see that they're, they're a little different. a nice bronze color. And then these colors mix just like your regular watercolors mix. So you can always, if you don't quite have like a dark enough green, you can make it. One's got, that one's got a little interference color going, a little color shift on the black that didn't show up on the other colors. And they're black. The, this one shows up black on white paper, and look how sort of pewtery color it is. And the bronze is still the bronze. It's just always fascinating how these colors work. And this is why I recommend you test your, your products so you know how your materials react so that way you know how to work with them. Instead of thinking you're gonna get one thing and being surprised, you're actually getting known results because that allows you to push the boundaries of your work. So now I'm gonna work backwards with the Tombi um, colors, the, the Zig Kurataki colors. And we will move forward with those. My white pen, as white pens are prone to doing, has decided it doesn't want to work. So we'll use pencil. All right, so this set is a Zig Kurataki. It's their starry colors. Um, these are Japanese. 
I have found that these are actually pretty darn good colors. They're nice and thick. And they make uh, gouache paint also that's lovely. And so while we're not comparing colors per se here, we can say compare the golds. And also this gives you a good worksheet to know what each one's going to look like. And I have sheets like this up in my work studio so I can see what color palettes got what, or sometimes I stick them in with the, um, the palette itself, like the little etcher one came with this. It came with this little thing, so I did the paint on it, and it lives in the palette, so we know what we're... So I know what I'm looking at when I open it, if it's been a little while since I've forgotten it. Alrighty, we will start with the white. I'm gonna zoom this out a bit, make it a little easier to see, although close-ups will be a little harder. Okay, white, we can look and see some of these are still wet, but you still get a good idea of how things are drying. Um, we're gonna have to come back. The fine tech has definitely got a lot of mica, a lot of color. I can see the mica in it with it ship you can see it reflecting in the light there and as these dry we will see the mica content and the pigment content come to the foreground so we're going to let these dry and then we'll come back in a few minutes and have a good look at them because they're still really wet especially on this black watercolor paper all right our paint is dry and we are going to be doing comparisons comparing we're comparing similar products on similar paper so we've got the fine tech the creative Ex expressions the etcher lab and the tombi and looking at these everybody's got pretty decent reflectivity which i would say that the tombi the golds and silvers are really nice the etcher or the fine tech is very good and they've always been good that that paint is nice and pasty and then creative exploration expressions and then Etcher Lab. I did find the Etcher Labs did not soften up quite as much as the others. And I, I got these guys all wet before I started painting. So actually the Etcher Labs sat and soaked for a little while longer than say even the Fine Tech. And I know in my use the Fine Tech gets nice and pasty fairly fast as does Creative Expressions. So, you know, there's none of these are positive or negatives. They're just, they just are facts about these paints. And I'm looking at the black. This black has a little mica in it, a little mica in it. I find that Etcher Labs is almost like a, a dark silver pewter color. It's sort of interesting that it's not black black like these guys are. So let's move on to the gray toned. And you can see how the, the colors sort of reflect. It's very, it's just fun. I love these, the way the colors reflect. Um, I'm going to rate all of these fairly equal. What's interesting is to see like this etcher, these two colors here, they're, they're black or what looks black. It's more pewter, pewtery silver and then the bronzy color. And then the blacks here with um, 
fine tech and creative expert expressions they have a little creative expressions has more mica in it than the fine tech and the fine tech sort of just a like a dull black with a little bit of sparkles in it but all of these colors look great on the um gray ow the cool the, the fun stuff the black black watercolor paper all right tombies everybody looks just they the colors pop you can also see how some of these colors change and remember in the video when i talked about the fine tech up here these colors on white look almost the same color they've got a lot of gray base in them in fact a lot of these do they have they just look sort of blah on white but you get the fine tech over here on like the gray and then the black and they pop so i would consider those interference colors they need the dark color to show up and it makes whatever pigment is in here, the dark pigment that shows up quite well in, on the white, just sort of recede into the background and allows the colors to shine. And the black, again, is interesting. Very little sparkle here, quite a bit of sparkle there. And then this is the, the etcher black, which looks very silver there. You can see it on the, on the white paper here, where it looks fairly black, and then the bronze so again no you know practice on the materials that you're going to be working on so you can see how the colors stand out and I would say all of these colors shine very well on black paper probably more so than white I mean white's fun but by golly use your use your um your mica colors your sparkly colors on dark paper I think that's really what they're made for so I'm Lee Kellogg and I hope you enjoyed this little video about the pearlescent colors and how they show up on um, different papers and what they look like. So get out, do your experiments, play with what you have. You don't need to run out and buy any, but maybe this helps you figure out what you need or what you might not need. And sometimes just a little bit of gold can go a long ways. And remember, Daniel Smith does make some gold in a tube, and they've got a few other pearlescent colors, and they're a little different than these guys, so I didn't compare them in this time, in this round. I wanted to compare similar items. So I'm Lee Kellogg. You can find more at my website, leekellogg.com. There you can subscribe to my monthly newsletter, Creativity Monthly. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, please and thank you. And if you want more art explorations let me know classes are always happening in person online and planning some retreats so if you want to travel with me and do art and learn more in the field take my travel survey it's on my website under travel we'll see you soon bye bye